Do you have a large React code base with a lot of plain React code like use state and use effect everywhere? I mean, that's OK, but we can actually do way better. The number one indicator of bad React code, at least for me, is really plain vanilla looking React code. And that's because it's not code made for humans. Um, and what I mean by that is humans are actually quite good at thinking about complex things, but they're really bad at remembering specific details. Like, um, was my variable named uh, past location or previous location? Or does it matter the order in which I call things? Do I need to remember that order? Um, or what about the order of um, arguments to a function? Like that's something where humans really struggle with is all these like little details. Um, and so this is where we can really look at making your React code a lot better. Most of what we do as programmers is based more on intuition and imitation than on our stellar primate memory. We make a lot of mistakes. Uh, so, so source code that is written with our you know, human flaws in mind is going to be a lot more robust and a lot more maintainable than source code that is merely just you know, sort of regurgitating the tutorial and the, the documentation over and over again. Um, like for example, um, say you have an API call um, and you want to show like a loading indicator. If you have to write show loading, make API call, hide loading, every single time you want to make an API call, I mean that's, that's not programming for humans in mind. We forget. Or somebody comes along later and adds some code in between and now the hide loading is gone or in, they put it in a branch accidentally. And so anyways, bugs creep in. And so when we're designing for humans, we need to design for how humans work and how humans think. So things like the loading indicators need to be encoded in the API itself. And that means your code is not gonna be just really plain vanilla, you know, React use effect everywhere. Like you're gonna need to, to go beyond that and start thinking about how humans think and how humans interact with code. The point is that when writing code, you should ultimately be evaluating and crafting the code for humans and how humans think and behave. This often means you have to think more about how you're writing your components, how you're structuring your hooks. You're thinking more about the abstractions and how humans perceive it than just trying to write clean vanilla React code that is in practice very fragile code. If you design for humans, then humans will, will be able to work with the code uh, without worrying about breaking something in one place by making changes in another place. We've all experienced that kind of code base. It just feels like everything you try to touch or improve breaks something somewhere else. This is a clear indicator that someone was not thinking about the humans who actually have to work with and maintain the code base. Like, remember, computers don't care. They would be just as happy if you fed them zeros and ones. They don't care. Well, the reason we have programming languages, or even React to begin with, is just for our human brains. Like, that's, that's why we have any of this at all. So if we're gonna have it, we might as well take advantage of it and write code that's made for humans and, you know, more incidentally for computers to run. What I do after I've gotten my code working is I look through it and imagine how other people will interact with it. I look for things like, are there, you know, implied dependencies between the order in which things are done? Is there anything that's not obvious or clear on first reading? Um, does it matter the order in which I do things? Are there going to be any consequences to modifying this code to somewhere else in the code base? Um, and like, 
ultimately what I'm trying to understand are what are the correct abstractions here? Like that's really my end goal, the correct abstractions for a human mind to read and work with this code. So I'll be like, hey, does it really make sense to like have all these, you know, use all these use state calls directly or, you know, should that be encapsulated in a hook that describes, you know, what state changes are taking place? Um, you know, or, or a, a basic example would be like um, the use effect with an empty dependency array, which we use to um, run code um, one time after our component um, first mounts. So do I want that all over my code base? Um, or would I be better off with creating a new hook called say use once? And in this, this, this new hook, um, maybe internally it behaves that way, but like when I'm actually reading my code elsewhere, I'm not going, okay, use effect. Oh, okay. Empty dependency array. Oh, okay. That means I'm running this, you know, one time on component mount. No, instead I just say use once and our, you know, human brains just start um, associating that with its actual implied meaning. We're not, we're no longer just like trying to interpret all the time, okay, what did the programmer mean by writing this code? We know what they meant. We, we know they wanted this code to run once when the component was mounted. Like that's just known. There's, our brain doesn't have to be constantly interpreting and storing and loading and it's just very clear what the original intent was. So in our previous example, you might be thinking like, oh, no, it's better to write clean, simple React code. Just, just use use effect of the empty dependency array because everybody knows what that means, right? And if you write it that way, a new person can just jump into your code base and they'll know what it means and they'll be able to start working with your code. And guess what? You are correct. They would be able to jump in and start working with it. But let's look at like what actually happens when they do that. They will always be trying to figure out what the original intent was. And it may be in this case, it's pretty straightforward and you don't run into problems. But the, the real issue is, this new person's not really gonna know what you meant all the time by using all these like idioms. Um, whereas if you had encoded things and, you know, for example, hooks, you know, that had names that, you know, communicated what you were trying to do, um, it will take them longer to get to know your code base because they're gonna be like, oh, use once, what is that hook? I gotta go look up what that does. You know, like they're not gonna be able to just on quick glance know exactly what it does. But we're not trying to communicate just what something does. We're trying to communicate what we want it to do. Um, and that's really, really critical because um, both because we as programmers will often make mistakes and so it might do one thing, but that's not what we necessarily intended it to do. And somebody else will come into the code base and they'll see the thing that it actually does and think that's what you intended it to do. Um, and that is a massive source of, of bugs because they start building based on those assumptions and so they build the wrong everything gets built wrong now based on these wrong assumptions. Whereas if you take a lot of care to um, build up the right abstractions um, that clearly communicate what you actually want to happen, it's gonna be a lot easier once somebody learns your code base to actually work within it because they'll be like, oh yeah, use once. That's what you use when you want the code to run once on component mount. Like you're no longer, and, and when you're reading through that code, you're not going, having to process that every single time. You're just like, yeah, I had to learn it. It took some time, but now that I know it, it's faster and more efficient. And when you like take my example or earlier of like combining maybe use state calls or something, like when you put that under a, a name and, and give that um, some context and some meaning, then it becomes a lot more clear to the person working with the code what you want it to do. And so these new, a new programmer, yes, they cannot just jump right in and start working, but once they learn um, what you have, they'll be able to work way more effectively because they won't be breaking things everywhere else, they won't be making wrong assumptions. Um, ultimately, really what I'm talking about here is, 
you, you, if you follow this, if you're trying to make things for humans, you'll end up with um, domain-specific languages usually. So you're no longer working directly with use state and use effect and um, you know other basic React components. Instead, you're working with the language of whatever problem your program is actually trying to solve. And so again, it takes more work uh, up front. It takes more work for new people learning it. But the net effect is you can come in later and start modifying the code and you'll be able to do it very efficiently and effectively without introducing new bugs, without making wrong assumptions about how things are supposed to work. I think it's time to start writing better React code. So next time you write some vanilla React code, um, I just challenge you to ask yourself, is there a better way to do this that would um, be more intuitive and communicate intent to humans? Um, to start thinking beyond the zeros and ones that we are feeding the computer machine and start thinking about the humans who actually need to work with and maintain your code base going forward. Woo-hoo! <laughs>